second part of our, um, our study this morning, the second part will be some history of the oneness Pentecostal movement in India. The first part was just a little history of, the, of Christianity, missions coming to India. Now we're going to review just a little bit of the history of the oneness movement. There was a missionary uh, had come to India, a single lady that became known as Mother McCarty. M-C-C-A-R-T-Y. This is pretty important that you spell that. Stan will let me know if it's spelled correctly. McCarty, is that right, Stan? Is that correct spelling? And people call her Mother McCarty. Mother McCarty. She went to India to work with some Trinitarian missionaries. And uh, she started receiving letters from her friends in the United States telling about the oneness movement. Uh, it was Jesus named baptism, and that God is one. And she had never heard this before, but these people in America were sending her letters that this is the new revelation <coughs> that has come, and people are starting baptizing people in Jesus' name, instead of the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, so she and a couple of brethren who worked with her they were studying the Bible to find out, is this true? And um, she could understand the baptism. She was able to understand water baptism, but she was having a difficult problem to understand the oneness of God. But one of the Indian pastors that were, was working with her, he understood the oneness of God before she did. And he helped her to understand and receive a revelation of the oneness of God, that God is not in three separate distinct persons, but there is just one person, and God is manifest as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So God helped her understand this finally, and she told the other missionaries, and that mission where she worked, she said, now it's going to be necessary for me to baptize people in Jesus' name, and also I cannot accept the doctrine of the Trinity because I believe God is one. So when she said that, the other missionary said, we do, not, but we do not believe this. If you believe this doctrine, then you will have to go. So they told Mother McCarty, you and those of you who believe like this, you must leave. So she left that mission and she got on a boat. She and I believe two of her co-workers, Indian people, they got on a boat and their small belongings, they didn't have that much, and they started down the river. They came eventually to a village. was called Bhattarani, which is in the state of UP, the state of Uttar Pradesh. They came to Bhattarani village, and Mother McCarty said, this is the place where God wants us to start our mission. She felt in her heart that this is where we should start the mission, on the banks of the tributary of the Ganges River. So. They got off the boat, eventually they started a mission there, but the Hindus did not want her. The Hindus said this Christianity is a foreign religion. We don't want this foreign religion in our village, we are Hindus. So they tried to stop her, but she was determined to have a mission here because she felt God wanted them in that place. So eventually 
they established a mission in Bhat Parani, and the name of that mission they called it Barosagar. Barosa means faith and Kar means house. So Barosagar mission was the house of faith. That was the name of their mission they established. And that was, as far as I know, that was the first oneness Pentecostal mission that was established in India. Barosagar. Today it is still called the same. It is still Barosagar. And uh, so it was Barosagar in uh, Bhat Parani village in the state of Uttar Pradesh, which is only about, it's about 80 miles from Baranasi. It is not far from Baranasi, 80 or 90 miles. The Hindus, one day one of the Hindus brought to Mother McCarthy a loaf of bread. She was so happy because she said up to this time the Hindus have rejected us, they hated us, but finally a Hindu has brought me a gift of a loaf of bread and she was so happy for that. And she put the bread on her table, kitchen table, and before eating the bread, she just prayed that God would bless that bread. And when she prayed that God would bless the bread, God spoke to Mother McCarty and said, do not eat that bread. So she put the bread outside. At night, she just put the bread outside the door of the house and left it there. The next morning when she got up, there was a dog lying dead near the bread. And they examined that bread. Inside that bread, there was ground glass. They put glass inside that bread, hoping to kill Mother McCarty. She had so many miracles like this in her life, where God saved her and spared her. And she built a fine, a fine work in Barosakhar, even an orphanage, an orphanage was built there. One day, they went from the mission house down by the bank of the river, and the, they were just looking on the bank of the river, there was the sand near the water, and they saw something in the sand, something round in the sand, and they wondered, what is that? So they went over closer to look at that round object in the sand, and they found it was the head of a baby, a little baby's head. And the baby had been buried in the sand. They had dug a hole, and they put the body of the baby down in the sand, and the head sticking above the sand. And the reason they did that, so when the water of the river would rise higher, that water would drown that baby. So they dug down into the sand and they took out the baby. And they took the baby to the Barosakar mission and that was the first orphan child. They started an orphanage with that baby. Later, I saw that baby. That baby became a fine young lady a beautiful young lady, she had a good education, she became a school teacher, and a fine Christian lady. But that's where she, they found her, just a little baby, buried in the sand, with the head sticking out. But like that, there were so many miracles, unusual, wonderful things that happened in the Barosaga mission. And she had, she had a missionary working with her, several actually, but one was called Joseph Resnicek. To spell his last name is difficult for me. I can never remember how to spell it. 
but he became a good friend of my father. They were boys together in Oregon. They were boys together, and it was Joseph Reznicek that sent letters from India about the mission work. That's what caused my father to feel a burden for India. As my father heard about India, the need of India, God began to speak to my father that he should also become a missionary in India. But Joseph Resnicek was from a German background. He had all kinds of interesting experiences. In those days, there were not many roads, no jeeps, no vehicles. So he used to often travel by elephant. And he had the special ability to discern water. Now, he was one of those men, if you give them a willow stick in the shape of a Y, and he would hold a stick like this and walk along the ground. If that stick came to water, if there was water underneath the ground, you couldn't see it. If it was water underneath the ground, he'd hold that stick and walk along. Suddenly that stick would pull down towards the water. And he, not everybody could do that, but he had that ability as he walked with that stick, he could tell there is water underneath, down in the ground. So then people would know this is the place to drill a well. If you drill a well here, you will have water in your well. So because he could do that, the local government used to send him by elephant to the villages. He would ride on the back of an elephant and he would go to the villages to help the people know where to put their wells so they would get water. So one night, he was riding on the elephant through a village. It was summertime, very, very hot. So all the people were sleeping outside, some on the ground, some on char pies, but they were all outside and the elephant was going through the village and the elephant suddenly stopped. And when the elephant stopped, he looked down to see why, why did the elephant stop? And there was a little baby lying asleep right in front of the elephant. A little baby was asleep. So the elephant put its trunk around the baby and gently lifted up the baby and put the baby over on the side and put the baby down. The baby didn't even wake up. And then the elephant moved forward again and after a while the elephant stopped again the second time. And when the elephant stopped this time he looked down and there was a man. A man was lying on the ground in front of the elephant. So this time the elephant put its front leg up against that man like that and just pushed him. <laughs> and when the elephant pushed that man, that man woke up and he saw this huge elephant and he shouted and started running as fast as he could <laughs> to get away from the elephant. <clears throat> but there are so many stories of Brother Reznicek and his mission work. Two of his wives died in India. One of them died from the Lu wind. The Lu winds, the hot winds of North India are very dangerous. They hit you through the ears. It can cause heat stroke. The first wife died, some mental problems, and I don't know what all was the cause of her death, but he, he lost two wives in India. So as we look at the history of mission work in India, one of the things we will see right from the beginning is sacrifice. Mission work cannot be accomplished, true mission work cannot be accomplished without sacrifice. If you want to be successful, in working for God, you must be willing to sacrifice your life. For us to have salvation, Jesus paid the price of sacrifice. 
Jesus gave his life that we might have salvation, <coughs> we must be willing to give our lives that others hear the gospel. So sacrifice is a part, a very important part of mission work in India. There had to be sacrifice. There was 